Hi everyone, in this video I will shortly go through the high time frame scenarios that I have bullish and bearish and then I'll move immediately to my new brand new medium time frame and low time frame scenarios that I will cover in a little bit more detail compared to my previous video. So let's start on the higher time frame with this bullish scenario that I have at the moment where wave C is not yet finished in this scenario as we are in an 1, 2, 3 still in wave 4 before we can then expect a move to the upside for wave 5. Why this is currently my preferred scenario is that we didn't even hit the common wave C target, which is the white box over here, basically in between 34K and 27.7K. And also price did not even hit the rare wave C target, which is a minimum of 25.4K. The only thing that price did is take the high of A, which is the minimum requirement for wave C. However, it is very rare for wave C to end over here. So this is why I personally, with the count at the moment, expect another move up. Now in this wave four, which is always a longer sideways correction, the invalidation is below the 0 0.5. And over here we have the wick, the invalidation at about 20.3k as high time frame candles should not close below this 0 0.5 else this can very easily become a 1, 2, 3 for way more upside. Now a potential trading setup can be that if we take the low of this 4 for some liquidity as well as right at this 3A2 the entry can be there with the stop loss below the invalidation with a little bit of leeway and then trading it up for wave 5 where the 3A2 is then a minimum target in this red A and then we have the B over here, the red B minimum target is actually the 3A2 at 29.6K. So that would be a very nice target in confluence then with this support, then turning resistance uh, as a very nice typical and old school support resistance flip. The stop loss for then the potential short to the downside is then first of all entering at the 3A2 and the stop loss then above the 1.618, which actually is the maximum target for a wave C taken Fibonacci from the A over here to the low of B. Now the bearish scenario on the high time frame is that wave five is then already in and that we are basically looking for a lot more downside to come for this eventually red wave C. The invalidation is taking the highs that we made a few days ago at about 25.3K. Now, if you then go to the medium time frame, I'm excited to show you my new scenario in a little bit more detail and actually go through my thoughts of this scenario as well. So I'll put on my target boxes and over here what we're looking at is a three wave structure. So this is a three wave in a W followed by a three in the X and then eventually we're looking for a three in the potential Y wave that I have here at the bottom. The invalidation for this three wave Y uh, would be taking the highs of X. So a very clear invalidation at about 24K. And over here the question is, is this move to the downside on basically the low time frame? Is this a five wave structure like an impulse, like a one, two, three, four, five, or is this a three wave structure with basically an A, B, and then a very extended C, followed then by another three wave structure in the B, and then eventually either a five or a three wave move down for the C to eventually end wave Y? Well, we actually don't know yet. However, if we can look at how long this price has been ranging already for a potential wave four, if this then is a one, two, three, and then we're looking for a four, five, it has been ranging for quite a long time compared to the very small wave two over here, which makes it less and less likely that this is a wave four. The longer it continues, um, the worse it becomes for the scenario of this being an impulse basically. So that is why my more preferred scenario in the lower time frame is a three-way structure which I will show you in a second. Now I think, and that's something I didn't highlight, I think what is important to say is that I have FIP times on my chart over here. And those are for a reason, because FIP time and time in general is very, very important with Elliott waves. So if we look at the X, you can see that the high of X was made exactly at the FIP timeline over here that is named the 3A2 and that is the FIP time that I took from the high of 3 to the low of W and then you double click at the W to, you toggle on the 3A2 and you will see that the high of X was made exactly at the 3A2 which is actually very nice time confluence as well besides the other confluence that we had at that area. Now if we look at the other FIP times that I have on the right side the 1 to 1 and the 1.618 those are meant for wave Y where I basically compare wave W with the potential length of wave Y. So the blue stripe that I basically have on my left is the exact same length in time as the one on the right. So the 1 to 1 FIP time is the exact length of wave W 
and then put on X. So the FIP, uh, trend based FIP extension starting from three to the low of W to the high of X, turn on the one to one and the 1.618. And this area over here can be a very interesting ending point for a potential wave Y. And that's also the reason why I have the potential trade setup there. Now, if we look into the trade setup, you can see that over here, the bigger white lines are trend-based uh, FIP extension lines as well. And that could be an interesting target for wave Y. It's the high of three to the low of W to the high of X and then turn on the one and the 1.236. And wave Y tends to end most commonly in between this target area, which also has very nice confluence with my yellow target box, as you can see with the confluences inside the yellow target box mentioned here on the side. Now the maximum retracement or how deep a wave Y can go is this 1.618, hence the reason it is red and that is the absolute max. Um, however, with the trade setup, what I did is I put the potential entry then at the weekly naked point of control with the stop loss below these lows. If you want to play it more safe, then of course this is a possibility, putting the stop loss below the 1.618. In the end, better be safe than sorry, but in this current scenario, I just have it down here. And interesting is going to be, will this be the end of Y and then potentially the end of the high time frame four before then moving up to about 30K for wave five? Or is this going to be a three wave structure? So it's going to take even more time where this whole thing is only going to be wave one. Then we have a two and then the third wave that's going to end wave four before then moving up for a potential wave five in a more bullish scenario. That is something we don't know. But with the trade, we have to take that into account because with the trade, we could turn around here and then move to the downside again, right? It might not go all the way to the upside. And of course, it's a waste of a potential successful trade that you went in profit and then price moves down and you actually get your stop loss hit. That's not how trading should go, of course. Then let's move to the lower time frame and my lower time frame time frame preferred scenario that I will explain in a little bit more detail. So then again, you see here the W, X, Y on my chart as just explained on the medium time frame. And what you see right now is my preferred scenario of this being a 3-3-3 type of move. So basically this being an A, B, and then a very extended C, finishing this potential wave A, then looking for an A, B, C, expanded flat. That would be my ideal scenario, honestly, um, because also if we look at the low that has been made over here, it is a, well, basically weekend low, you could say. Um, it is, oh no, it's not, it's not made in the weekend. It actually was early, early morning Friday. Uh, but what I would like is grab the liquidity that is over here because this is my blue target box. And you can see there's a couple of confluences. There's a weekly, there's a daily, there's a daily naked point of control all in this area. And the target area for an expanded flat wave B is also here. So an expanded flat B, you take the Fibonacci from the low of A to this potential high of A, right? If this is then a three wave sort of A, and then you turn on the 1.236 and the 1.38. Those are the Fibonacci retracement levels for a wave B expanded flat. So that would look like this, taking the FIBs, taking the target area and then eventually move up. And inside this target area for wave B are those levels for extra confluence, which would be, uh, which would be very nice. Now, wave B tends to do wick below this level, but then close inside. So that's also with the potential trade setup that I will show you right now. I have a little bit of leeway here as well. Like, of course, one might want to trade with very low um, stop losses, but I don't think that's smart. Better safe than sorry. Always take into account you have no idea what price is doing. We could, we could also just dump, you know, but of course we play the probabilities, we play the scenarios and try to put them in our favor. Now, if this is then indeed an A, B expanded flat C, then eventually for wave C, what can be very interesting, and you may have seen already with the potential trade setup, because no financial advice, is that we could trade this potentially up to the point of control of this previous range over here using the volume tool. And if you want to learn more about how to use the volume tool and find these levels and trade these levels like a daily naked point of control and a weekly or whatnot, click on the card at the right top. But in this scenario, if we are looking for this to be an A, then a B and then a C, 
then eventually wave B, it would be nice to end at this volume area over here, maybe even taking these highs right at the 786 before then moving to the downside. And for then the downside trade, basically the potential setup will be to enter somewhere over here, have the stop loss at the invalidation of this wave Y in this then three wave structure, and then move it down to the yellow target box, which could be a very interesting target for this then A, a yellow B and then the yellow C ending somewhere in this yellow target area in between 21.1 and 20.6 K. So that is currently my preferred medium time frame as well as low time frame scenario in a little bit more detail. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you have value out of this video. And I see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Central East European time for the next Bitcoin update. Bye bye.